If that's suntan lotion, no thanks. Um? Here she is, Art. Huh? Did I surprise you? I know what you've done to my brethren. But you won't succeed with me. I'm always on, and you should be too. Do you see the mine back there? Uh-huh. I know why I stay away. It's about to collapse, and the suspended, and it's as dark as a buffalo's butt. Who knows what dangers lurk there. So I'd rather stay out here, in the sun, where it's safe. You shouldn't go into the mine. It's about to collapse, and and it's a who knows. It was so hot that the air smelled of ozone. But even back here, the fragrances of summer couldn't compete with the Wendigo stench. Are you crazy? Stop that! Those spray cans contain tons of CFCs! If that stuff gets into the atmosphere, we'll have an ozone hole here in no time! You don't want a hole in the ozone layer, do you? Uh-uh. You see? It was so hot, but even back- Lily decided to do something about it. Oh, the sky looks strange. It could be an ozone hole approaching. That's not good. Where's my suntan lotion? Ah, uh, there it is. Uh-oh, it's starting. Quick, apply the lotion. The sun had badly damaged the Wendigo. Apparently, nowhere was safe. That meant it was inevitable to spend time in dangerous places. That was a bad sign. Edna never went anywhere without her owl whistle. Edna had left a message. Hopefully she was all right. Lily, help! I'm being devoured alive by a giant tentacled creature. Ah, ah. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> just kidding. I'm fine. I was just watching the bridge down by the river through my telescope. Dr. Marcel's minions seem to be planning something. I'll check it out up close. If I don't return, you have to get help. But don't worry. I'll be careful. Where are my kettle drum and my strobe flashlight? Dang. Well, see you soon. Toodaloo. Lily was relieved by the letter. 
But what if Dr. Marcel's men had caught her friend? Lily had to get to the bridge and look for Edna. She would find Garrett. This damn piece of junk. Can you believe it? We finally found the girl, and now the car won't start. Should I perhaps push? This car should have been inspected months ago. But ever since the accident, the doctor has let everything go downhill. It's a shame. So, it was true. The attendants had already found Edna. Why wasn't Garrett doing anything? Lily somehow had to get his attention. It was hopeless. Lily would never catch Garrett's attention while the owl kept interfering. The owl didn't seem it was probably It was Lily would Lily was able to finally give Garrett the signal without being interrupted. Lily was able to finally give Garrett the signal without being interrupted. Garrett didn't seem to hear Lily's owl call at all. She tried once more, this time a little louder. Did you hear that too? Someone's out there. Just wait. We'll take care of it. Well, who do we have here? But that's... Uh-oh. The Phantom! The Phantom. Lily thoughtfully watched the fleeing attendants for a long while. She was used to having bizarre phantoms appear behind her without warning. But the way Dr. Marcel's minions had reacted surprised her. Usually adults just ignored these creatures.
Lily wasn't quite sure how to drive a car, but she'd find out one of these days. Lily wasn't quite, but she'd find The attendants had left their Lily! Oh, thank goodness! I thought they'd caught you! Unfortunately, Edna wasn't as lucky. I saw how she was snatched and taken back to the institution. This gives us all the evidence we need. I will contact the task force leaders right away. It's best if you stay put until I come back with reinforcements. However, it could take some time. And I can't guarantee that Edna will still be alive when we finally get the green light. If we're lucky, Dr. Marcel will torture her for a while before finally dissecting her or whatever else it is he intends to do with her. That would give us some time. She'll probably have to part with a few toes or fingers. Oh well, that's the way it goes. In any case, you wait here. I'll come and pick you up from exactly this spot tomorrow, or the day after tomorrow, at the latest. Although the day after tomorrow is a holiday. But oh well, you'll see. Just wait here. Lily would have really liked to follow Garrett's instructions. But, well, there were excellent reasons for doing what she did instead. The institution's post-Victorian masonry work had a friendly air about it. It was almost as if the architect had tried to spell out, Welcome, with bricks and barbed wire. This unspoken invitation found its culmination in a nearly overgrown back door, and Lily intended to graciously accept it. The door was firmly locked. <coughs> what a little scoundrel. The sneaky hamster had once again crossed Lily's plans. But despite this, Lily had no intentions of exacting a bloody revenge. There weren't many ways to play with the bush. Lily once made it, but then Mother... Lily was glad. It was so rare that her friends got along so well with each other. Of course, this was also because she hardly had any friends. Much more important, however, was that the asylum key was no longer out of reach. It had fallen into one of the dark bushes. The key had fallen into the bush. It was very dark in there, but Lily wasn't afraid. Um. After all, it was just a bush. Yeah. Why did the child have to be so careless all the time? The door was firmly locked. The door was... Well, who do we have here? A little girl. Just stay where you are, okay? Hey, stop! Just stay where you are, okay?
Hey, come back! Give up! You can't get away! Especially not against the current! Hey! Come back! Triumphantly, Lily climbed the ladder. She had finally found a way to get into the institution. Not so fast! <coughs> Although she was briefly distracted by a floating energy smarty, Lily was able to reach the ledge. Not a moment too soon as the ladder crashed down behind her, dragging the phantom into the pit with it. No! Fortified by the energy smarty, Lily was able to pull herself up on the ledge. Now her search for Edna could continue. Something was missing here. It was hopeless. It was hopeless. It was hopeless. sooty chimney. So what? I used to be very fastidious about staying clean. Now, I don't care anymore. You're now speaking with the dark Mr. Frock, who eats his gummy bears without a napkin. Um. Yes, I know that it's dirty here. So what? I love the cobwebs, the dust, and that rotting sub... I just finished combing it. I wouldn't dust here even if you put a feather dust... You don't have a feather. Uh -oh. Stop! I don't... Duh. You don't need to mumble like that. Ever since Dr. Marcel's accident, we can make as much noise here as we want. He's no longer interested in what's going on inside the asylum. All of his attention is focused on finding Edna. Uh. Somehow you remind me of a patient. She was a little taller than you. And I think I remember... Two red horns and a tail. For the last time, the new Miss and I just. The idea was good. The idea was... <laughs> Moths fluttered around the dim light of the lamp. They were apparently searching for food. The idea was good. 
but Lily's arms were too short. The idea was good. Um, uh huh. It was hopeless. The man in the bee costume couldn't hear Lily from there. The idea was good. The idea was Lily knew she wasn't supposed food was such a and when it started acting up What do you have there? A feather dust. Not that I you're now I'm not necessary. Lily had inadvertently broken off the leg of the chair. It was as pointy as a knife. Hopefully the funny little rabbit hadn't seen anything. But Lily, what are you? Don't you? You must not just don't see your... But Lily, what are... Don't you? You must just don't see your... <laughs> Surprised to see me again? Yes, keep kicking. You won't escape me again. And now hold still until I've decided what to do with you. Lily can Strange. The silly rabbit didn't even react to Lily's ball of wool. The phantom didn't look... You must not use sharp objects. Strain. This... The phantom didn't look... That's good. Keep not... The phantom didn't look... You must not. Lily had in an. It was his point. You must not use sharp objects. <laughs> what? Lily didn't want to appear greedy. One feather would be enough, just like a Christmas dinner at the convent. Well, you're very brave to come so close to me. Can't you see my teeth? My sp- Didn't anyone- That would be- I'd advise a good- <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, too? <laughs> uh. 
Come closer. <laughs> 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 That's right, I'll... Lily had the feeling The pain You dang brat Look what you did Don't just stand there Do something <laughs> <sighs> Thanks. That was close. I... Uh-oh. This demon had also made a mistake. It's Lily returned victoriously to reality. Damn you, you disobedient brat! Damn! Lily fought for air. The phantom's grip was tight around her throat. Disobedient, it had said. Vidi 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 whoosh! Welcome to the laundrette. That was your cue to say, This is supposed to be a laundrette, and I'll answer, Of course! Oh, admittedly, it's a little rustic, but necessity is the mother of invention. Mother knows best. And now, we're doing our laundry into wishy washy for you. What other choice do we have? Exactly none. You don't have to just make sure that the fabrics are separated properly. The toilet sanit will do the red laundry in the urinal with the red toilet sanitizer. Yellow laundry in the urinal with the yellow toilet sanitizer. Blue laundry in the urinal with... And green! If you want to try it, just show me some clothing with the right color. Then you can use the matching urinal as often as you want. That was yellow enough. The door was firmly locked. My goodness, who do we have here then? Another player! Yippee. Don't pay any attention to him. Peter just sees black all the time. He was born that way. <laughs> That's true. Peter suffers from color blindness. Struggle jug. Well said, loyal friend. We all have our crosses to bear. Oh, yeah? Do you all wake up every morning knowing that one. Not exactly. But Druggle Jug, for instance, 
mixes up his blues and greens. You can't really compare. Your girlfriend Petra mixes up her yellows and greens. She's not my girlfriend. And we, King Adrian, mix up our reds and yellows. You should have been there when we played the board game. Sorry, Peter almost choked to death. I wanted to end my. Afterwards, we decided never to play a board game again. You decided that. And what did we just? It's so exciting. We are a group of it. Oh, please. Struggle jug. Not so. F if the fair maiden wishes to join us in battle, she must first prove herself. She must complete a task that puts her her. Just tell her to order a pizza already. Uh um, She shall order us pizza. Um. I want broccoli, but no tomatoes, please. Druggle jug. Druggle jug. Bananas aren't bad either, but I could just. For broccoli. Oh yes, please do. For that, I'd even happily have bananas on a pizza. You only eat blueberries anyway. Yes, I like blueberries, but in this life, you never get what you want anyway. <clears throat> Upon the order of the king, blueberries will be banned from the pizza. Instead, knowest that tomatoes will grace the pizza dough from now on. Lily had heard enough. It seemed impossible to get a pizza that everyone liked. You struggle, jug. Yeah, bring us thou the pizza. It's really all you need are dice, pencils, paper, and don't forget to bring a ten. Struggle, jug. Um, don't you have to forgive as we all, Peter, Adrian. Mixes up his reds and his yellows. Drunk, and I mix up my yellows and my greens. Funny, isn't? It? Um, you're probably wondering why Droggy has a green pillow on his head, right? Droggle jug? My goodness, she's what on earth are you? Droggle jug. <laughs> Wait until you. Today should. <sighs> Droggle jug. Druggle jug, I believe our guest deliver her thy new druggle jug, druggle jug. Dr Don't forget to mention the hell druggle jug, and was never seen again. Bravo! Since then, these lands have returned to the wise rule of a magna. We can do whatever we want. Does that mean no? Hello, Lily. You're not. Go of course, you know that. Welcome to Spammy's Pizza Service. My name is Pokey. Can I take your order? Um... On well, the asylum, is that right? I assume that we just shove it under the gate as usual. What toppings? Uh... Hello? Hello? Can I take your order? Uh... One with nothing coming up. Consider it done. It'll be about 30 to 45 minutes. Have a nice day. But water, don't you, you must just see your. It was hopeless. 
It was hopeless. But Lily, what don't you you must just see your right? Perhaps Mother Superior had been right, but Lily just didn't know. What do you have there? A feather. Not that I would want to have a feather dust, no matter how pretty they look. Which doesn't mean that I can just one. That would be completely harm. Give it to me now. Ah, oh, what a relief. And just look, I even found here. Go ahead, you, you. The door was fur- Dr. Marcel would surely be pleased with the help of his Hello stranger, before you say anything, please take a deep breath. And is that what freedom smells like? Or is it just regular air consisting of oxygen, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, soot from the asylum's new chimney, and a touch of diesel oil from the garage? Ah. 
I don't want to seem melodramatic, but I'm somewhat skeptical about this so-called freedom. Ever since Dr. Marcel started neglecting his duties as head of this asylum, it's us, the patients, that carry the burden of creating our own boundaries. And before I'm able to measure up to this freedom, I do have to ask myself a few things. Maybe there are such things as good boundaries. And even in an ideal case, can I really decide where my own freedom starts and stops? It so happens that no one is preventing me from leaving the asylum. Does that mean I'm free? Can I just fly away, spread my wings and leap from the asylum roof? The urge is there. Just like any bee, I long to buzz across fields of flowers collecting honey. But I'm still fighting it. Something about this freedom stinks. That's very nice of you, but that reminds me too much of my life. It's already hard enough for me to let go. That's very, but that re it's all. The moth seemed in something told her. Moths flutter. They were apparently. Hello, Lil. You're not of c You know that. smells good. But even if the illusion is almost perfect, it's only artificial flavors and chemical esters. An almost perfect illusion, but not real. Like with everything here in the asylum, it's only a half-hearted attempt to trick us into thinking that we're free. And now that no one is stopping us from leaving the asylum, it provides us with a welcome excuse to refuse to leave. Right you are, stranger. I'm just running away from my responsibilities. The responsibility to myself, to accept the deal that the world out there has offered me. I thank you. I've made up my mind. I can't just sit around here doing nothing anymore. I should buzz across fields of flowers and collect honey. Toodaloo, asylum. Hey-ho, freedom. Whee! Lily was glad that she had helped the bee man. Soon he would be in a better place.